Philip Norton, thank you very much indeed for joining us. I, I just wanted to start by asking you, is there any historical equivalence at all to what we've just seen over the last week with sort of 50-odd members of the government resigning in, in one day? <laughs> no, there's no uh, precedent uh, uh, for it, given the scale and the extent to which it's taken place at the same time, and then creating a, a unique constitutional situation in the sense that there's pressure on the Prime Minister not only to resign, but to resign immediately and to have a sort of temporary Prime Minister, which creates a new situation. So we've not been in this situation before. Controversy about whether or not Boris should be able to continue as, as Prime Minister. I mean, I, I, I haven't been able to understand why it's why there's been any controversy over it, because, of course, David Cameron stayed on when, yeah. when he resigned and Theresa May stayed on, and no, nobody batted an eyelid when that happened. So um, is, is, there, is there any reason at all why Boris should be expected to go and, and make way? No, only the exceptional circumstance we find ourselves and people say, well, look, um, the circumstances in which he's been um, pressed to leave. But you're quite right in that the expectation is that a prime minister, once they announce they're going, will stay in office until such time as uh, a new leader is elected, at which point the leader, the prime minister, goes to the palace to resign. So that's the expectation. So the only consideration that would come up would be if a prime minister suddenly decided to give up immediately, or, of course, if we didn't have a prime minister, the incumbent died in office. In those circumstances, it does become an issue of can you have a temporary prime minister? But as long as the prime minister is prepared to stay in office, they remain prime minister until such time as they go to the palace to tender their resignation.